Oh, I was also pointing out that I find that if I look at the intraday charts, because they can swing so much more quickly, I can get concerned. I can't think, oh, something's happening here. Uh, and if I'm a daily trader, I should just focus on the daily and perhaps the longer term. The longer term will usually support my position. The intraday can sometimes make me doubtful. On your daily trade, isn't there a shorter time frame that you use as an indicator? As a no, not, not usually. Not usually. In the currencies, I do sometimes. I watch the Forex. I don't look at a terribly short-term chart in that. I, I use 600-minute charts in the Forex. Daily and then it's four hour or so on. Excuse me? Sorry. If you use the daily, if the daily is the chart you're trading on, then you use the probably the weekly and maybe a four hour or three hour chart. For, uh, a four hour or three hour? I, I think it's more like a 10 hour that I might look at for the currencies. And I, I look at the Forex charts for that rather than the currency futures usually. But, uh, but that's about as short term as I get. I'll sometimes enter off of the 600 minute chart on the, in the currencies. But I was showing you all the daily reversals uh, that I like. I usually just wait for the end of the day. Although I am glued to the screen all day, it means I don't have to be. <laughs> stochastic divergence. We already talked about the, the divergence that I like. I'm going to look at some standard stochastic divergence and also some more examples of the one we looked at earlier. Uh, and one more kind of divergence. Uh, bullish stochastic divergence. Bullish if the price low is lower than the previous swing low and the stochastic low is higher than the previous stochastic swing low. Bearish if the price high is higher than the previous swing high, and the stochastic high is lower than the previous stochastic swing high. And we have standard divergence here. We have swing high, st stochastic high, higher high, higher closing high. I'm particularly concerned with the, the closing high, and a lower stochastic high. So we have a, a standard stochastic divergence setup. And here we have the standard bullish stochastic divergence setup. Swing low and a stochastic low, lower price low, higher stochastic low. So a sta basic stochastic divergence bull bullish setup. And one or two more examples of the same thing. This one looks like it would have qualified, it certainly would have qualified as one of my favorites. We have a, a stochastic swing high, or a, a market high, stochastic swing high, a higher high with a considerably lower stochastic lo high. Once again, that, it, that's clearly a, a minimum of a 10 point difference and I would have uh, liked that one. And another one, this, this would be more, this would be another one of my favorites. A price low, stochastic low, a lower low, and a considerably higher stochastic low. So I don't, I don't like the divergence setups if they're questionable. I only like them if there's significant divergence. This one is very, very significant. This one just couldn't pick up any momentum at all at that last high. And obviously worked out very well. It's from years ago. Another one of my favorites, basic price low, stochastic swing low, lower low and lower close, and considerably higher stochastic swing low. And another one of my favorites, this one also worked out well. The, swing, the swings in the stochastics clearly have more than 10 points difference there. going to move on to another type of divergence. This is a trend following divergence. Some of you may have heard of Larry Williams. Larry Williams credits my, my old boss at CTS, a young man named, who was young at the time, uh, named Nick Van Nice with uh, identifying this type two stochastic divergence at CTS. We call this a CTS trend confirmation signal. In this case, we have a stochastic swing low and a price low. Over here we have a higher price low, however we have a lower stochastic low. And we get the, we get the buy signal, so, it, so the, 
bullish price pattern remains intact. However, we have a lower stochastic low. We get the buy signal when the faster K line crosses over the D line. And we would risk below this low. Let's see. Another, this is a bearish example of the same thing. This one, this one was kind of double stochastic divergence. We have a stochastic swing high and a price high, a higher stochastic high and a higher price high. Here we have a much higher stochastic high with a lower price high. As I said, this is the trend following signal, and it worked out quite well. A bullish example of the type 2 or bullish divergence or a trend confirmation buy signal. We have a, a low where the price pattern of lower, higher highs and higher lows remains intact. Stochastic swing here and here. This one's much lower. It's an excellent type 2 setup. And let's see. Another one of the same. Price low, stochastic low, higher price low, lower stochastic low. And as I said, we get the buy signal when the faster K line crosses above the D line on a closing basis. Once you're in, you place a stop below that low. More of the same, pretty much. Type 2 bearish divergence with a stochastic swing high, another baby swing high, and a higher stochastic high here with a much lower price high than either, either of the previous price highs. Oh, overbought and oversold stochastic. I still talk to a gentleman who's been around this for a long time. And uh, he gets very concerned when the stochastics become overbought. We've, we've uh, I'm, had quite a run in the, in the currencies lately. This stochastic was overbought way down here. And it didn't go above 90 until here. The, ru the run was really just getting started. One of the, actually, to be honest, one of the reasons I don't leave the stochastic on the chart anymore is because it can distract me. I can think, oh, this is overbought. Uh, but it had a lot much, much further to go. And we can see that one, one way to get around that is to, uh, is to move up to your weekly chart, look at it on a longer term time frame, and see that really it was just getting started. Uh, even on the weekly chart, it was barely above mid-range when, when the daily was way overbought. And on the monthly, the monthly was barely out of the oversold zone when the daily was overbought. So if you do get concerned, I suggest looking at a longer term time frame to settle things down. And of course, the flip side of the dollar index would be the euro. And it, it shows the same pattern. The, uh, the top was right here. The market was already, the stochastic was already in the oversold zone here before, the, before there was much of a move at all, already below 10 here. So very deeply oversold. But the, uh, the market just continued to decline. And once again, the weekly would have helped with that. Uh, we uh, we uh, looked at this significant divergence on the weekly, so that would have helped settle things down. We knew that we had a, a very nice divergence set up. And uh, the weekly was just below mid-range when the daily was deeply oversold. And similar to the dollar, the monthly was barely out of the overbought zone when the daily was deeply oversold. So. I suggest, if, if you're concerned about the condition of the stochastic being overbought or oversold on the daily, or on whatever chart you're looking at, every time frame you're looking at, look at a slightly longer term uh, time frame, and it might help out. Wide range reversals. I already mentioned that I love wide range reversals. When I was putting this together, I was astounded at how many amazing divergences there were on the weekly charts this year. If someone, I mentioned my friend who, who said he should only trade off the weeklies and, and golf, uh, he could easily have done that looking at just these wide range reversals. Here we have one in gold. 
you can see what happens. Silver, similar, similar pattern. Uh, if I were acting on the wide range reversals, I would certainly buy options. And this is an example of why you need to buy time. We'll be talking about my interest in buying time a, a short, in a short while. But uh, here, you, would, you needed to buy time partly because it went sideways for several months. But it did finally work out very well. What do you mean by buying time? I'm sorry. I was going to get into that with options. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about how, how important it is to buy time. We'll, we'll go into that in a little bit. Resetting stops? Oh, we can, I usually use those swings. When we have a new swing, it's, yes, that, that, that's basically the step down program. So I would, I would uh, bring, move the stops down along with the swings. As soon as you reaffirm, in this case, whoops, we had the, uh, the entry signal here. We had to move down, we had to move up. Once we move down and reaffirm, once we get be close below that low, I consider that reaffirming the decline. And once we reaffirm the decline, move the stop up on whatever chart you're on, whatever time frame you're playing.